And this is the Sarasota Technology User Group, or STUG, for Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. We're starting with some announcements. Today's topic for the presentation will be how smart is my smart TV, and then some examples of services that are available. Uh, at the end of the show, we'll do a drawing for a STUG one-year membership renewal. And since it's a renewal, that means we need to have you, uh, uh, you have to be a member to get the renewal. And I didn't change the date on the end of that. Sorry about that. Uh, if you want to become a member, uh, one year membership in STUG is $30 for individual or for the family. And you can go to the website and uh, uh, sign up there. Uh, the classes and forums are limited to current STUG members only unless otherwise noted. Uh, this month, uh, the iPhone, iPad applications, uh, uh, the Saturday ones uh, by Bill Crow, hosted by Bill Crow, uh, December 3rd has already been, but the recording is on YouTube. And then December 12th and 17th will be part one and two of the Apple Watch. Uh, on uh, Wednesday, December 14th, Marsha Berkey is hosting uh, Working with Photos. It's not too late to make a personalized gift for Christmas. This session will focus on simple personalization things that you can do with your photos for any time of the year. Uh, and you need to uh, uh, get in touch with Marsha and she'll get you the link for that particular session. Uh, I host the Windows Special Interest Group for CFCS and STUG. And uh, that's this Sunday. And uh, it's at one o'clock Eastern time. We actually start the meeting at 1.30. There's a social time between one and 1.30. That's this Sunday, uh, Eastern time, one o'clock. Uh, and uh, you need to be registered for it. If you're already registered, you will not need to register again. Uh, tech tips and uh, discussions with me. Uh, the next one will be in January. There will not be one here in uh, uh, December. And uh, I'm sorry to say that I didn't have anybody uh, last month sign up. So I, I'm going to wait till the first of the year. Hopefully we'll have some people who are interested in it. If not, we will cancel again. Uh, the Stug Help Desk is scheduled for the third Wednesday of every month. And uh, the next one is December 21st. And you need to sign up uh, uh, with the link that's there. It's hosted by Jim Cerny. Uh, don't forget the holiday party. It's in person only. No Zoom. You can't join us with Zoom. You got to be there. And you have to register by Thursday. Uh, let's see. It's going to be Thursday, December 15th. And you have to be registered by 5 p.m. on the 13th, two days before. You must be registered in order to be uh, allowed into the community where the party is going to be. Your name has to be on the list. So uh, we've got a good crowd uh, already. And if you want to join us, uh, you uh, please uh, uh, go ahead and register. Uh, the Tech for Seniors, Tech for Senior Live uh, uh, is every week, Mondays and Thursdays. Learning Chromebooks is the fourth Thursday of the month. Uh, don't forget the STUG website, the STUG newsletter, and our YouTube channel, as well as the STUG Facebook page. We also have the STUG Groups I.O., where you can ask questions and get answers. And uh, don't forget also the STUG Friday trending email. Uh, it's sent to all current members every Friday. And we now have a STUG calendar. If you go to the uh, website, you'll see that yellow uh, icon that's in on the bottom left that says Google Calendar. If you click that, you will see the calendar and all of the items uh, for that current month. And if you click on one, it'll give you more details about it. Uh, tonight, we have the election of the Board of Directors. The uh, uh, candidates will be up on the screen in just a moment. But first, these are the members of the Board of Directors that are retained for one year because the offices are for two years and every uh, year only some are uh, up for re-election. So Dick Bales, Jim Cerny, Pete Schneider, myself, 
Pete Dobbins and Jonathan Lipman uh, will be retained and the slate of officers uh, uh, are posted on there. And I'm going to turn it over to Jim Cerny right now. Okay, hopefully everybody can hear me all right. I may Absolutely. be repeating a little bit of what Huey already said, uh, but first I must inform you that uh, as we published in the Monitor this past month, the Stug Board has made a change to the bylaws to allow for additional directors to serve on the board, okay? Previously, our bylaws stated that there were 10 board members, but the bylaws have now been amended or changed that says that we will have at least eight board members with no upper limit. This allows us to have additional board members if we feel the need to do so. So we have some Stug members in good standing also that attend the board meeting at invitation by the board members, and these people help to uh, get actions done by the board and work with the board, but some of them are not actual board members that attend every board meeting. Now up for the, uh, the current board, board members that Huey already mentioned to you and showed the photos of, those people are going to continue to serve their second year of their two-year term. In other words, these people, Dick Bales, Jim Cerny, Peter Schneider, Huey Poplock, Peter Dobbins, and Jonathan. Jonathan is from the high school, by the way, which is, we're very glad to have him, uh, but he's not elected, okay? But these people will continue to serve this coming year in 2023. Now, the members that are up for election today, if we could go to the next slide, Huey. These uh, members are up for election, and they are... Bill Crow, I'm probably saying these out of order, Ann Ross, Bill Crow, Dave Gerber, Mike Hutchinson, Leah, I think it's pronounced Pitard or Picard. I, I can't get her, I'm sorry, Leah. And Drew King, okay, they're up for election to be elected for a two-year term. Now, we're not electing people for a specific function of the board. We're not electing a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, that kind of thing. What our bylaws state is that you, the members, elect members to the board, and then the board meets and decides on the board who would best serve in the various offices, such as president, vice president, and so forth. So those office holders will not be revealed until after the board meets, probably not until January or later. Okay, um, now's the time that we must open up to all members that are attending for any additional nominations for the board, any nominations from anybody. You're welcome to unmute yourself and speak up if you have a nomination, or you may put it into the chat and nominate somebody by name, and you're welcome to nominate yourself as well. And I'm going to give uh, two minutes for that to happen. And I'll ask Huey if he would check the, uh, the chat board for me to see if anybody enters any name. So it's open now for anybody to nominate any additional board members. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. We'll wait for just another few more seconds. Is there anything in the chat, Huey? There is nothing in the chat box. Okay, I'm going to close the nominations in a moment. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, all the nominations and the board has uh, have been nominated and opportunities for the members to nominate people has also just been provided. Okay. Due to the past history and circumstances of conducting these meetings on YouTube, we don't have to go around and count hands or look at every window and do that kind of thing. So I'm going to simply be asking if there are any nay votes for any board member. 
If anybody would not want to vote for a board member, this is the opportunity to say so. We're just going to ask for nay votes. And of course, the majority would carry, so a couple of nay votes wouldn't do it. But uh, we want to give everybody the opportunity. If you have an objection to any of these nominees, now is the time to object by registering a nay vote, either by unmuting yourself and objecting verbally, or by putting something in the chat to Huey. And I'll warn you now that if there are no nay votes, this will be the board elected to serve in 2023 for a two-year term. So we'll give it a, a few more seconds for anybody to vote a nay for anybody uh, that is nominated. I have heard no nay votes. Huey, is there anything in the chat? There is nothing in the chat box. Okay, since they were no nay votes, ladies and gentlemen and members of STUG, these are your officers that will serve a two-year term starting in January of 2023. And I thank you for your time and your attention and best seatings greetings to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And let me get here. Ann? Hold on. Now can you hear me? Yes. Thank you very, very much, Jim. Thank you for, for conducting the nominations and the and the election of, of not the officers, but of the directors to the board. And we will be meeting sometime in the month of December in order to determine the position. So we'll be ready on the 1st of January to be up and, and running. I think that the first... I think that the first meeting we have in January is going to be the 4th. I believe it's going to be the 4th of January. So we're going to have to do this before January. And I will get with everybody else so that we will. Thank you, everybody, for, for uh, agreeing to have us back as your board members. We're excited to have Drew King join us. And we're delighted that we could do that by changing our bylaws. So thank you all very much. It now gives me the greatest of pleasure to introduce to you our speaker for tonight, who is going to speak on how smart is my smart TV. And boy, am I ready to hear it because I don't think I have a very smart one. In fact, I'm about to turn it in and say, you're not smart enough for me. So I'm going to be listening hard, Huey Poplock. Okay. So if you have a, a smart TV and use a cable service, well, you have never explored any of the free or paid services available on your TV. So we're going to be seeing tonight what Huey can show us to add many of these free services. And he's also going to describe many of the services that you can use for free movies and TV shows. I'm listening. You might eventually cut the cable, which is firing your cable company, and only using streaming services. And once you experience how easy it is, that's what you're going to do. And Huey's going to show us how he did it. He's been a member of the Stug board for I don't know how many years, but we're glad to have him as uh, on our board of directors. He cut the cord early in 2018, and he streams all of his TV viewing viewings using many of the services that he will describe and demonstrate. Uh, Huey hosts Tech for Seniors, and if you've never been there, you really should try it one, one week because those are really great sessions. And I also want to say he's a member of the Speakers Bureau, this, of, the SI, no, of the APCUG Speakers Bureau, and presents to user groups throughout the U.S. and Canada. And he recently did two presentations to AARP's Senior Planet Mission Statement. So let's give a great big stug welcome to Huey Poplock. Well, thank you very much. And uh, this is going to be a, a, a little bit different a kind of a presentation uh, because the first part of it is going to be from a TV. And, you know, you can't just show a TV uh, on Zoom or on your computer. 
So I had to uh, actually set up a camera and uh, video the uh, record the uh, two TVs that I have to show you some of the things. So it's going to be about a 10 minute video in order to do that. But before we start that, re remember that you don't have to buy a Roku box or a Roku stick or a fire stick or a fire box uh, if you have a smart TV. That's number one. Number two, you don't need to shut off your cable in order to try it and use them. Uh, you can use it in addition to using uh, the cable service that you use to try it, get used to using streaming. Then if you decide, yeah, the extra work is worth saving the money and I can get what I want and I can, and I don't have to pay for a lot of things I don't want. Uh, and you can get a lot of free things as well. So uh, let me get started with the, it's about a 10 minute video. Then I'll, I'll break, answer some questions, and then we'll go into some of the services that there are that uh, you can get free TV and free movies. And then uh, I'll answer any questions along the way as well. But the video, we're going to get through the whole thing before I answer any. So let me uh, share my screen. Advanced. Make sure I get the right one here. And let me move this. How to add streaming services to your smart TV. I'm Huey Poplock. So let's add a streaming service to a Fire TV and a Roku TV today. This is my Toshiba Fire TV that's in my living room. I stream all of the TV. I have no cable. And uh, when I turn it on, this is what I get. At the top, you'll see that I have several choices on changing things and setup. And then I have some of the top choices that I have. And then below are all of the choices. But when I click on this, this will show all of my apps and my channels. As I go down the list, you'll see the several rows. In other words, I have lots of installed applications or channels or services. And these are the ones that I have. Now, it shows that I can have installed on this TV or I can show not installed. In other words, that I haven't picked. But let's go ahead and choose one that I don't have from the list of movie channels. And I'm choosing Plex. And there it is. Now, when I click it, I have a cho choice of getting it. Once it gets it, it proceeds and then puts it in the queue and then it downloads it. And installs it. And then you can open it. And once I open it, there is Plex TV with different choices of things that are available through Plex. Plex is a service that you can have, you can actually show your own movies as well. You can save items to your watch list. You can watch content on one, one app, and then you can also uh, set favorites. So you don't have to set up an account, but if you do, it will remember what your settings are each time. There are many channels that you can watch that are live. So you can see the times and what the programs are. And you can choose whichever one you want to watch. You just click it and you'll be watching that particular program. As you see, there are a lot of different choices in Plex, as there are in all of them.
Now we're looking at the local, so uh, it has many local channels, many local news channels uh, as well, and you can watch any of those. If you sign in and set your area, you can eliminate those who are you can eliminate those that are not in your area. Here's choices of movies and TV programs. And so we have installed Plex now on our Fire TV. Now when we click on a particular movie, it will show the cast and some information about it you can play it you can add it to the watch list you can watch a trailer and you can mark it as played and as you see there are several things that you can choose sign in search home watch list live tv movies and shows discover you can even listen to some music and you can check to see what your media what you've marked as your favorites now i spend approximately eighty dollars a month for direct tv stream and that's the main service that i use i can watch live tv and it allows me to pick up the local stations in this area besides the stations uh, of the major channels as if i was getting cable tv As you can see, I have a guide to go by. I can click on any one of those and watch it, watch it live. Or I can click something in the future and tell it I want to record it, and I do get a DVR or digital video recorder. We're now looking at Freevee, which is the former IMDB. Amazon purchased it, changed the name but it has a lot of old TV shows and movies available for free. It is another service that I use to watch free TV. Now we do have a choice of how the list of services or apps are listed. We can click and we can move it to the front, which moves it all the way to the top, or we can just plain move it, click it, and then as we click we can place it wherever we want at this what we're doing is we're moving it towards the top we're going to put it right there let's switch now to the bedroom tv which is a tcl roku tv and see how to install a service or an app on it this is the list of apps that are already on this tv as you can see i have a lot of them and this time we're also going to add Plex to the Roku TV as we did to the Fire TV. We're going to search the channels. Very similar to the other, but as we type in the letters, you'll see the availability of what we're looking for. And as soon as we type in the first two letters, it's already over on the right-hand side. We'll type the whole thing in, and it goes to Plex Free Movies. We go ahead and click it. It says we have a choice of adding the channel or viewing screenshots. Let's look at the screenshots first. And it does show us a few screens of, of what it's going to look like. Very similar to... Uh, the Fire TV version.
and you can see a lot of movies you might recognize the names okay so now we want to add the channel so it's adding it it's been added now and we're ready to either go to the channel we can remove it we can do whatever we want this time we're clicking it to to go to the channel it's loading the app and it's the same as it was on the fire tv you see plex and then you see the choices that you have you can sign up for free or you can go without signing up and we'll do that first we can do several things we can search we can look at what's available we can look at a, a, the home the watch list to discover we can watch tv and movies and shows and music same as we looked at plex on the fire tv it's almost the same on the roku tv as you can see we can go to movies and shows we can look at categories You have to remember that when you're streaming, you're waiting for things to download. So there is hesitation. It's not like cable where you just click a button and you're there. It does have to load. Sometimes it takes a little while for things to load as well. And again, uh, we can look at the information about a particular movie and it shows the stars. We can add it to the watch list, watch the trailer mark has watched and then there's some other choices we've now added plex to our roku tv now there's several things and settings that you can have with your roku tv and you can search you can show all of the streaming channels that you have you can add more or look for more to add just by clicking and going to those now not all of those are free some of them are subscription based that you pay for by the month and uh, you can search whatever you want you can add any of the pay services or any of the free services to your roku as well as your fire tv okay uh I showed you a lot. It might be a little bit confusing if you've never used uh, the smart part of your TV. If you have an older TV that isn't a smart TV, you can get either the and have HDMI uh, uh, slots in, in the back of your TV. You may have one, two or three of them. You can plug in either a Fire Stick or a Roku box and use them to do the streaming. And uh, you just switch the input on your TV to those uh, to that device, and then do the same thing that I just showed you. Uh, there were a couple of questions in the uh, in the chat box that I'll cover first. Uh, Bill asked, uh, uh, "Does my ISP throttle my connection if you stream too much?" Mine does not. I do pay for a gigabit service. I have very fast uh, download and upload. I use Frontier, uh, but I only have internet. I have no other services uh, coming into the house uh, for TV. And uh, so it's all done through the internet and my TV. The other question was, as far as, uh, let's see, it, Drew said, as far as streaming data goes, Xfinity limits his account to a maximum of one terabyte a month. I think Frontier is more generous. I have no throttling of speed so long as I keep within the one terabyte. Xfinity app shows me how much I have used at any time. I actually don't know how much I stream. Uh, uh, I don't think Frontier even tells me, uh, but some of them do. So uh, what you can do is go ahead and uh, try some of the streaming on your TV. And especially uh, as you say that the Xfinity let you know how much you've used so you can get an idea how much you're using. You may need to upgrade your internet uh, uh, if, if you do want to do that. But if you cut out the cable, you'll have some extra money to do that. 
Uh, are there any questions uh, from any of, of you uh, in the audience? Uh, raise your hand using the reactions, and then I put you at the top of my list, and I can see you and see uh, if, if you have some questions. I don't see or hear any. Let's see. Oh, Marcia asks, if you run out of HDMI ports, you can get an HDMI hub to plug in more inputs into your TV. Yes, I had a uh, uh, a TV before I moved where I am now. I had a TV that only had one HDMI plug. So I bought, uh, it was like a hub and it actually had another remote, just what I needed. Another remote that you could switch HDMI ports. And I think it had four of them uh, on this hub. So I could add up to four devices. And, and then switch between them. So I first had to switch the TV to the to the HDMI one, which then gave me the hub. And then I chose using that uh, uh, remote to switch to whichever port uh, uh, on it that I wanted for the HDMI. Okay, uh, let's go to the next part of this. Okay, so this next part is about websites to legally watch free movies online and TV shows. Uh, and remembering that when I, when I say the word legally, there are some boxes that you can buy that may have a program on it, which is not illegal, and it's called Cody, but they sell these Cody boxes and they're filled with illegal uh, 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 streaming TV and movies that uh, may or may not be of any good quality as far as is uh, whether to be HD or uh, yeah, high, high def or whether it's going to be 4K. Uh, a lot of times it's, it's very low quality, but it's the most recent movie. Some movies are still in the theaters, but it's actually coming from Europe and, and other uh, areas of the world. And it's, they're pretty much illegal and you could, uh, find yourself in trouble just by the uh, uh, the cable service or the, I'm sorry, the uh, internet service that you have, your internet service provider may see that you're streaming a lot. They may check to see where it's coming from and then turn you over to the police so uh, or to whoever is watching that sort of thing. So be careful. Uh, these are legally... Uh, services that you can install on your Roku box, on your Fire Stick, or on your smart TV directly without using one of those boxes. So let's kind of go through those. But before we do, uh, we're going to look at several free streaming services to watch movies, TV shows, sports, and more. But I need to add a couple items that I didn't include in that video that you just viewed. And sometimes you have to activate a service. So sometimes when you, you go into the service on your TV, you, you install it and you try to start it, it's going to come up and say, hey, uh, you need to enter a code. You go to a website on your computer and put this code in and then it, it will match it up and then it'll allow it to work on your TV. It's magic. And this is what it would look like on, uh, uh, on your computer. You type in whatever the code device was that they gave you. You click activate. Then all of a sudden, you'll see that service start working on your TV. You can also watch TV on your PC, Mac, Chromebook, or Android phone or iPhone. So any of these services I show you, you can if, if you've got a Chromebook or if you've got a, a Mac or a PC, you can go to their website. And since you already have an account, you sign in with that account and you can watch all of these on those as well. So let's, uh, uh, as, as an example, this is Pluto TV. And you can see that there's a, a listing at the bottom and then you can see a preview. And this is the, the Legend of the Lone Ranger. And then once you find the, the movie that you want, and by the way, I can't show you the movie because then I'm violating copyrights. So I'm only showing you a, a clip, uh, or a, I'm sorry, a, a photo of my screen, but you can then full screen it and you watch the movie on your big monitor or on your iPad or on your iPhone. You can watch a movie wherever you are, long as you have internet. And uh, 
and enjoy any of the movies that are available on these services. Now, these are the websites with free movies and TV. And the ones that are uh, in bold are ones that I subscribe to. These are all free. But there are some conditions with some of them. And some of them also have paid uh, accounts that you can add and get more or maybe without ads and so on. Uh, this is a list of some. Here is more of them. And this is the remainder of the ones I'm going to cover in this next uh, few minutes. So it might be a time to say goodbye to Netflix, Hulu, or Disney Plus if you're using any of the paid services, especially if you're trying to lower your monthly costs. So uh, some of you may be subscribing to Netflix and didn't realize that you're using th that part of your smart TV. Uh, you'd be surprised how quickly all of those services can add up and match your cable bill if you're trying to cut the cord. So luckily you can keep your spending in check and still get your cinema fix. There are plenty of places to go online to stream movies and TV shows for free legally. And these are some of the best options that I'm going to show you. The first one is called Hoopla. Now, many people don't know that their local library card can get them more than just books. If your local library supports it, you can also gain access to a couple of the different services that let you watch free movies online. And Hoopla is one of them. I think the Sarasota uh, library system does have Hoopla and I'm, and I'm almost positive the uh, uh, Manatee County does. Hoopla features tons of free movies and TV shows online and through its mobile app. So beyond movies, Hoopla also has tons of eBooks, comics, music, and audiobooks. Uh, so that it can become your one-stop entertainment shop. Just keep in mind, Hoopla works kind of like a standard library. So you'll only be able to borrow a certain number of movies, TV shows, or books, and you have a set time to finish them before you have to check them out again, or to, you have to check them back in. Now, uh, this is a screen from Hoopla. Uh, you can... Oh, to sign in, it's going to ask for your uh, library number and the your library card and probably the library card password. You should get a pin when you get your library card. And uh, if you don't have it, you have to see your librarian in order to uh, either get it or get or reset it up. But using Hoopla, you have to sign in with your library account. Now, the next one I watch a lot, and I really like it, it's the Amazon Freebie, which was formerly the IMDB TV. It's one of the best websites for movie lovers to catch up on all sorts of movies and uh, celebrity-related content. It offers local movie showtimes and ticketing, trailers, movie critics, uh, and user reviews personalized recommendations, and even a robust library of free movies online. The service comes bundled together with Amazon Prime memberships as well. It features fun family favorites, but it also has many cult classics as well. Whatever kind of mood you're in, you can bet Amazon Freebie has something for you. And this is what Prime Video looks like. Uh, I did a screen capture. I watch Judge Faith sometimes. I do watch some of the old Dragnet TV shows with uh, Jack Webb. Uh, there's uh, lots of good movies. Uh, Judy Justice, which is uh, uh, Judge Judy. Uh, I always get a kick out of those. But you also have full seasons of NCIS and other TV programs. Uh, and this is just a, a few things uh, that from one screen that I did a capture of. So uh, there is a lot in Freebie available for you. Popcorn Flix is another service. It's a straightforward video streaming service to watch free movies online. It hosts tons of films, TV shows, and documentaries. Documentaries. I got to accent the right syllable. Uh, the service has been around for nearly a decade now, but the library seems to have made a recent move towards B-movies. It features a well-organized directory to quickly peruse the various genres you are interested in, including new arrivals, foreign films, and even popcorn flicks originals. 
and here's their screen. And again, I, this is only one screen that I grabbed. Uh, I could go on and, and it'd show many screens, but uh, you get the idea that uh, uh, there's old TV programs like Barney Miller and, uh, uh, and news radio and, of course, old movies as well. You're not going to get the things that are in the theater, but you're going to get a lot of good movies. And, uh, you know, if you watch a free movie, what's the difference whether you uh, uh, get the latest one in the, in the theater or you watch just a good movie? There's another service online. Uh, the Internet Archive is a little bit more of an oddball in this list. I've done a, uh, a video on the Internet Archive. And so not only can you stream thousands of hours of free movies online, but you're also uh, free to download nearly everything on the website as well. That's because all of the content on the Internet Archive is either uploaded by users or falls within the public domain. Most feature films are more than 70 years old, but it's the place for classic detective sci-fi horror and silent films. A lot of them are in black and white, but it's a good place to find some really old, good movies from back in the 40s and the 50s and even uh, some in the 60s. Canopy is just like Hoopla. Uh, all you need to get up and going with Canopy is a library card. And again, some libraries will have Canopy and some don't. So we can't guarantee every library supports it. But Canopy is a treasure trove of free movies online uh, if yours does support it. Uh, you may also be able to uh, tap into Canopy's library through your school or university. So if you have an EDU address, you should be able to uh, get to, through to Canopy as well there. Uh, you can access Canopy online through the services mobile app. And there are more movies than you could ever hope to watch. Plus, uh, Canopy's movie selection is top-notch, uh, featuring award-winning films from studios like A24. And again, this is what it will look like. If you have a library card, you can find your library, and then you uh, it's going to ask for your library card number and a PIN or a password that you got from your library. Or if you're part of a university, you can uh, use that system as well. Plex is the one that I uh, installed on both of my TVs. It's a valuable tool for people who want to access their personal media library from anywhere in the world. Uh, Ray uh, Baxter uh, did a, uh, has done some presentations on using Plex. Uh, he uses it to store all of his movies. He gets all of his movies from DVDs and whoops from DVDs and uh, other uh, uh, places and puts and creates his own library, has a big hard drive and stores them on that. So from anywheres, he can get into his Plex account and watch his own movies anywheres in the world, as long as he has internet access. Uh, Plex now has its own online ad supported media library. So users can watch tons of free movies online without having their own collection. This selection of free content fits seamlessly within the existing Plex interface so that you can access it either from the app or within a browser. Whether you're already a longtime Plex user or you've never even heard of it, this new movie selection is worth a look. And again, here's a screenshot of some of the items that are available through Plex. And I mentioned to you that there are some local TV uh, outlets that are represented on Plex, it's mostly news and they're usually like it's the 11 o'clock news from maybe yesterday and maybe the, the noon news from earlier today, you might be able to watch tonight. You're not gonna, in most of them, you don't watch them live, but you do get them shortly after uh, uh, they were on uh, your local stations. So if, if you're, uh, especially if you're a snowbird and you like to look at the local news from where you're, either from or from down here, when you're up north, you can use Plex and take a look at some of those stations. But there's also other news services that are out there uh, that have uh, uh, apps that you can download and just to watch the news as well. If you're a, a Spectrum subscriber, you can log into your account through any of these systems or on your TV and watch 
the uh, their Channel Nine news, so you can watch the their twenty four hour news continually on any of your devices using your Spectrum account to sign in. Pluto TV, uh, one itch most streaming services don't scratch is the need to channel surf like you can on a cable television. That's where Pluto TV comes in. Pluto TV features tons of free movies, TV shows, and cartoons online. And through the Pluto TV app, it presents them in a way that's more akin to classic cable. Pluto TV has a section where you can stream content on demand, but it also features more than 250 channels that you can tune into uh, to watch at previously scheduled times. Naturally, that comes with a few downsides. But if you're looking for a one-to-one -one replacement for your existing cable service and free, Pluto TV has you covered. And there's lots of different types of things that are available on Pluto TV. And this is from their website. And again, any of these services, you don't even have to install them on your TV. You can go in and sign up and use them on your computer to see what they're what they have available as well. Crackle is a streaming service that feels like it's been around forever. It's one of the staples for budget-minded movie lovers looking for free online content. Like most other services on this list, it's ad-supported, but Crackle's library is more robust than others, and it is available in your web browser and through various smart TV and mobile apps. Whether you like watching your movies on your TV, computer, or smartphone, Crackle is there waiting for you to give it a shot. And that's what their screen looks like. And again, you'll see some movies you may have heard of, maybe some that you haven't, and you can watch them at your, uh, at your whim. Now, the top dic uh, documentary uh, films, uh, if you're in the mood of a for a documentary or documentary, uh, top documentary films has you covered, whether you're looking for a film on human health, environmentalism, or outer space or something here for you. It features some of the best documentary movies that you can find online covering a vast selection of topics and it's all completely free. Some movies are only a couple of minutes long while others are as long as any classic movie. So whether you have only 15 minutes or a few hours, you'll be able to find something on the top documentary films. And here is a screenshot from their service or website. Tubi. Tubi TV has been around since 2014. And since then, the service has grown to become one of the highest quality free movie streaming services that you can find online. What ex what's excellent about Tubi is that it offers some of the overall best films on this list. It also boasts various genres, which you won't find on many of the other free services like LGBTQ, Home and Garden, Reality TV, and Musicals. It also has many hand-curated collections. So if you have difficulty finding what you want to watch, Tubi will help you narrow it down. There's also a growing number of exclusive movies on Tubi. And here's what Tubi screen looks like. So you can see the John Wick movies, uh, uh, American Pie 2. So I'm sure they probably have American Pie 1. And so again, Movies you may have heard of, but they may not be the latest movies. And here's some more. These are the TV shows. You can find the old Columbo shows uh, uh, and maybe some other the other ones that you recognize. Another service is called Yidio. Like movies found online, Yidio doesn't host its own content. Instead, it aggregates online movies and TV shows from paid and free services into one easy-to-navigate user interface. Because of that, Yidio's library looks massive. You can watch free movies directly from the website, and you can also browse content on Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Hulu. But you have to subscribe to those services to be able to watch them using this service. 
So if you have at least one of those streaming services, you might give uh, Yidio a try. And this is what it looks like. YouTube, this is plain old YouTube, is chock full of content creators, vloggers, and even original content. But what people might not know is that YouTube also offers a library of movies and TV shows beyond YouTube originals. Within that online library, there's an entire selection of movies you can watch entirely for free on YouTube. Though the free library isn't the largest on this list, you'll find horror films, comedies, action flicks, dramas, and even children's movies. So the next time you check out the Android Authority YouTube channel, be sure to scout out YouTube's free movie library. And here's some things that are available through YouTube. Now, the Roku channel. Now, there's a question on in the chat box is, what is Roku TV? Is it a physical ob object? The answer to that, Sue, is yes and yes and no. There are, there are several things that Roku is. Roku is a physical piece of equipment that you can plug into your TV to watch all of the things that I'm showing you that it, it makes an, a dumb TV into a smart TV and you use the Roku box. But there's also a Roku channel sponsored by the same company that is available on the Roku box, but you can also, it's a free channel, so you can add it to if a Fire TV or, uh, or any, any uh uh, smart TV that you have, the Roku channel is available to you as well. The streaming service also gives you free access to some live TV. There's no subscription fee involved, and you can watch the free titles available on the service through your Roku device. Other streaming devices like uh, the Fire TV stick uh, or even a web browser. So you can go to the Roku channel on your computer and watch the same videos that you could watch on your TV. The service even has a few exclusive new movies you won't find anywhere else. And here is uh, the Roku channel screenshot. Die Heart, which is features Kevin Hart. So, you know, that's got to be a comedy. Reno 911, which is a, a comedy series from one of the cable channels, uh, but you can also look at uh, NBC News Now, uh, some live TV from ABC, and so on. And then there's also movies. Peacock is a streaming service run by NBC Universal. The platform lets you watch around 1,300 hours of content for free, including feature films and TV shows like This Is Us, Law and Order. SVU, and more. The only caveat is that you'll have to watch some ads while uh, uh, binging for free. Limited content on Peacock is available for free, no credit card required. You just need an email address and a password to sign up to access thousands of hours of great entertainment instantly. If you want to uh, subscribe to Peacock Plus, there is a monthly fee, and then you're able to watch almost all of the NBC shows and a lot of their own uh, 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 original content uh, things that are also available. So there's a free and a paid uh, Peacock available and uh, you can try the free. And if you want to use the paid, you can subscribe. And what I, didn't, what I haven't mentioned is if you subscribe to any of these services, whether it be the free ones or the paid ones, you, you can stop that uh, uh, subscription at any time. The paid ones require you to finish out the month that you have paid for, but you paid for it by the month and at any time. So if, if there's a series that's uh, uh, on one of the services that you have to watch, Netflix or Peacock Plus, and, and it's one that you want to watch if all of the... Uh, 
chapters or episodes are available for you. You can pay for it for a month, binge watch it, watch all of them, and then cancel and you've watched the program you want to watch. So it's a little bit different than cable, where cable, a lot of times you have to sign up for months. Uh, you have to pay a fee to sign up for it. You have to maybe pay a fee to cancel it and so on. With with the streaming services, uh, you don't have to. But if it's a paid service, you do pay by the month. And uh, it's not, if you cancel during the month, that usually will allow you to watch the rest of the month and then stop the service. It doesn't stop it right then, and you don't get any money back. And again, this is the Peacock screen capture. Uh, you can stream it for $4.99 a month. You can cancel any time. I think they have several plans, so you can get even, I think it's even more than that. I'm not sure. Uh, but again, all of these you can look up, go to their websites and see how much they charge, but you can try them for free. A lot of them uh, will allow you to, to try the paid service for a week. And then at the end of that week, you can go back to the free service. It's not easy, but you can do it, or you can just cancel. Uh, but I would say try the free part first. And then if you like it, and then you might try the uh, the paid. But when if you try any of the paid services, only do one at a time. Don't do them all at once or you'll get confused to which one you like. And you'll also, uh, uh, you won't get to watch uh, as much that you might want to. Con TV is previously called Uster. Con TV is a fandom focused digital streaming network. The website offers thousands of hours of programming, including free movies and TV shows across genres like horror, sci-fi, anime, martial arts, classical cinema, and more. It's also got licensed content from many other studios, so you'll, ha uh, you'll have to endure some ads while watching it, but you'll probably uh, guess that already. And again, uh, here they've got the uh, 007 James Bond series that are available uh, uh, through this service. Voodoo is mostly known as a place to rent or buy digital movies and TV shows. However, it also has a growing number of films and TV series you can watch for free uh, with ads. Uh, best of all, if you really like a movie you watch for free, you can always purchase it, and then you can watch it without ads and not have to worry about it disappearing from the free library. And this is what Voodoo, Voodoo looks like on the screen. Zumo is owned by Comcast, which also owns Peacock. Uh, Zumo has a number of older and more recent movies to watch, although most are not as high profile or have as high review scores as you can find on Peacock. However, Zumo does have a small number of exclusive films to watch. But again, it's free. And this is what Zumo looks like. And some examples, what you get from it. So that's how to add streaming services to your smart TV. We know how to set up your smart TV. And with that, we'll take some questions. Well, I have a question. Sure, Ann. Who has time to do it? all of this? <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes it's good to dumb down and just watch a movie instead of being on the computer. Or uh, sometimes you're just late at night. You can't sleep. You can watch a good movie. Uh, you know, if you're watching TV anyway, uh, you can watch something you might like instead of some of the junk that's on there now. Uh, Bill, you have a question. Yes. Uh, one thing we notice is when you're watching the ads, you can't a lot of times uh, pause them until they get into the program. Then you come back and it'll want to give you another ad. Is that on all of those services? Everyone's a little bit different. Some most of them, though, you can't fast forward through the ads. Uh, you know, that's why you're getting them for free. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, you got to endure the ads unless you get some of the paid services. Uh, if you decide that you don't want the ads, then you can pay for that service. But make okay. sure that service has uh, non-ads if you pay for it, because some of them you pay for and you still get ads. Oh, 
Thank you. Okay, Steve. Yeah, the um, the Plex Media one with the live TV. Can you do a search for a particular show in that? I'm sorry, which one? Well, for any show that you do, you're interested in seeing, is there a way yeah, you yeah, can mo- search for it? Most most of the services do have a search uh, that you can uh, type in. You have to use the remote. You've got to. Uh, use the arrow and the remote and and move it around to type in each of the letters. It takes a little while, so you don't do it too often. But yeah, you can uh, search and it'll let you know if they have it available. Sometimes they may not have it available or sometimes they may say, hey, it's coming up uh, uh, a week from Friday. Uh, And if it's one of the services that uh, allows you to record it, you can or you might have to put it on your calendar. Leah? Yes. Can the YouTube be done on your t- uh, computer as well? Every one of the, every one of those can be on your computer. Oh, okay. And many, uh, the Peacock. Often you see an NBC program, and it'll say that it's also on Peacock. Yes. So I'm. But I'm... but but Peacock. There's Peacock and Peacock Plus. And Peacock oh. Plus, you have to pay for. So some of them might, even though they say it's available on Peacock, they mean on the paid version. So okay. you may or may not be able to get it for free. And I got my ca- camera back. Yep, I see that. I'm glad <laughs> it's working. Uh, but again, I and I can emphasize, I can't emphasize this uh, enough that any of these you can go out to the uh, to their website and and watch a movie on your computer, on your laptop, on your iPad, on your iPhone or or Android phone. Obviously on your Android phone, it's going to, or your iPhone, it's going to be a very small picture, but there are some times where you want to watch a movie uh, in private and you can uh, even put in a, a headset or like I have a, a Bluetooth headset connected to your phone and uh, play the movie and you're listening to it and nobody else hears it and it's just sitting in front of you. So you know, uh, if you're sitting through a, a very boring lecture, you can be watching a movie, <laughs> not bothering anybody else. I hope none of you are doing that while I'm doing this presentation. <laughs> uh, Bill, do you have your hand up again or is it still up? Yes. Um, okay. We have Roku uh, boxes and a couple of them have the um, what you call it microphone on them, and you can actually talk into the microphone and not have to go through that painful uh, keyboard. Really, a lot nicer. Yeah, I haven't played with mine, uh, uh, and I do know my Roku does that, and the Fire TV has it as well. But I've just not played with it. Uh, it's easier for me to j- just type it in, and most of them now I know which. Uh, programs I'm looking for. And like Ann said, I don't have a lot of extra time. So I'm just looking for a particular program. Uh, uh, one of the things I really like is Law & Order. And boy, there are a lot of uh, a Law & Order SVU, uh, Criminal Intent, uh, the original Law & Order, and there's something else. There's like almost 500 uh, uh, episodes floating out there that uh, very seldom... Uh, do I see one that I haven't seen before or that I don't that, that I don't remember? Most of them I don't remember. I've seen them all, I think. But uh, uh, you've watched so five hundred of them. Well, over the years, I I probably yeah. watched them when they when they were in season. I'd watch them every week on uh, what was that? I think that was an NBC program. Yes, it was. Yeah. So over the I, years, uh, I watched them live. I think. Uh, Drew, you have a comment question? Uh, com- yeah, comment, I guess. Um, I'm one of those people, and I'm, I'm guessing that there are a bunch of us that are over time subscribing to more than one uh, streaming service or by default just have access to them because you have access to Amazon and you have access to uh, YouTube and you have access to this and that. Um, there is a really nice open source app that's available for Windows, the Fire Stick, the Android, um, iPhones, uh, Mac OS, Linux. Um, it's called Stremio, and it doesn't actually play any content. 
what it does is it tells you where the content that you want is. So if you, uh, I just did a search on Cobra Kai as one of the shows that I have watched on, on Amazon, uh, not on Amazon, on um, Netflix. If you search for Cobra Kai on, in um, Strumio, it tells you that you can also watch it uh, season one only uh, on Amazon uh, Prime. And also if you have YouTube premium, you can't get to the season two through five or six, whatever there are, but you can watch season one. Um, I just did a search on another popular show called Willow that is on Disney. And it's also available uh, through YouTube and Amazon and Microsoft and uh, AMC on demand. Um, and you can, let's say, pay, you can pay $5 a month for Disney and $5 a month for Paramount Plus and $5 a month for some other one. Uh, Streamio will tell you what TV shows are available on which of your streaming services that you can then let you go to that streaming service that you pay for to watch the content. Can you put that in the chat box, a link to it, please? Um, sure. Okay, great. That's um, a service I was not aware of. And what I what I'm probably what I'm going to try to do is in the next few minutes while we're all yakking about these things, or when we go into uh uh Anne's portion of the the end of the meeting, uh I am going to find the links to all of the free services that I mentioned and I'll put them in the chat box. Mm. Uh but uh, I've got them in a file somewhere and I forgot to uh go find them and I have to figure out where I have them. So uh, are there any other comments or questions before I turn it over to Anne? Yes, Hugh, you do not subscribe to all of these, correct? No. If, if you remember, there was one slide that I listed all of them. The ones in bold are the ones that I subscribe to, but none of them do I pay for. Okay. But you had about six of them. that you. Oh, yeah, at least. I've, I've, yeah. And I've got a lot of others that I didn't even mention. That I just go through the list sometimes and I say, oh, there might be something Screen. on this and, uh, and, and I'll download it. Uh, why is it not going? Drew, uh, are you talking to us or? Oh, or I'm going to mute myself. Out <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I, I hope this helped for those of you, you, you may have a smart TV and you've never used the smart TV part of it. And uh, uh, and didn't realize that you could use it and it doesn't cost you anything. And that's what I was trying to show you here, that you can play around with it, get used to uh, using some of these services. Uh, and uh, you don't have to watch some of the uh, junk that they've got out or uh, in the middle of the night, if you wake up and you want to uh, uh, relax a little bit, you can watch some mindless dribble from almost anywhere. Jerry, you have a comment or a question? You're muted. There you go. Uh, you might also mention that uh, you can get radios. I had Sirius XM and I didn't never realize it was on my TV till I saw it. And I pay for a subscription for Sirius XM, but I wanted it on my TV in my living room. Mm -hmm. So that was really good. Okay, good. That's good to know. I don't subscribe to it. So I wouldn't have known that. So thank you for that information. You can also get Sirius XM on your Echo uh, devices. That would be on the uh, Amazon devices. We don't right. say her name. We don't say her name or everybody's li living room or bedroom starts making noises. We call her <laughs> Miss A. All right. Well, I hope you got something out of that and uh, learned a little bit about that TV and the things that are on it that you've never played with or tried. Uh, they're probably yeah. there. If you've got a TV from and bought one in the last probably five, seven years, it's probably a smart TV. And if you bought one more recently than that in the last couple of years, I don't think you can even find a TV. It's not a smart TV. So uh, uh, if, if so, you can still make a smart TV out of it. The, the Roku sticks and the, the Amazon uh, uh, Fire TV sticks, they're in the $25 to $50 range, depending upon the quality and, and speed and model that you're getting. But uh, they're, they're definitely reasonable. 
and uh, it just takes some some power from the wall and and you plug it into an HDMI port and you're good to go. So if you have a, a TV that's not a smart TV, you can you can uh, make it intelligent real quick. Bill also puts out a nice product. I have their 4K, which comes with remote control and it makes your dumb TV smart TV as long which as you one have is that, a, Bob? One from uh, from Google. Okay, yeah, the 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 Google yep. Google thing like the uh, Amazon one, yeah. Correct. Yep. Okay. And the newest one even has YouTube TV built in. So if you're thinking of changing from and just going with Google TV, which is a streaming service instead of paying for cable, it's quite a bit cheaper and gives you just as much, if not more, than that's something else to keep in mind. Yeah. Now I subscribe to Direct TV Stream, and the only reason I switched, I had YouTube TV that I was paying, I think, around sixty-five or seventy dollars a month, and it was, I think, it was five dollars cheaper than the one I switched to. But uh, there was a particular station I like to watch the uh, 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 On Patrol Live, which is the old uh, 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 police police live uh uh the only service that carries it is the uh direct tv stream so i switched if youtube tv gets that channel i would switch back in a heartbeat because i really like the youtube tv uh, uh in the face guy the guide no. and and no. the dvr on it much better than i like the uh direct uh uh, TV stream. Now, the direct TV stream, like YouTube Live, is almost uh, uh, there's, there's no limit to how much you can record. But the the uh, direct TV stream live, I think, uh, only holds it for 30 days or 60 days. Uh, the uh, uh, YouTube Live, I think, is pretty much forever. And you can just build a library of things and go back and watch them. And and uh, you don't pay extra for their DVRs that are in the sky, in the cloud. So you don't have that big box like you do with the cable company And if you have a DVR as well. They have no limit on how much you can save, but it does go 90 days and then it disappears. Yes. Wow. Well, I am so terribly impressed by all of this. I want you to know that I have, I think, the very first TV that was flat, you know, the flat screen. It's only about mm, that thick. And and when the TV people come in and look at it, they just they just shake their head and say, holy <laughs> cow, they can't believe it. I still have one of those. But it still works like a charm. So I know it's not smart. Neither am I. But I truly enjoyed this entire presentation tonight, Huey. You did a great job. And yes. I'm sure we're all going to rush out and buy Roku's and, and Voodoo's and Zoomoo's and all kinds of things. <laughs> because you have done a superb job telling us all about them and it's at least piquing our interest. So if there are no further questions, I am now going to wish you all the greatest of, of holiday seasons. And before I do that, to a very special person who has won the lottery tonight, which is a free year of belonging to Stug. Oh, my goodness gracious. And I know he's here because I see him on my screen. Believe it or not, Drew King, our newest member of the board, you are the winner for tonight. And wow. thank, you. <laughs> thank you all for coming. What you have to do is very complicated, and so I can explain it to you another time. <laughs> but don't worry, <laughs> I will let the people that, that matter know that you are the winner. Nancy Dennis will be getting in touch with you, okay? Thank and you. let you know how to do all you do is just add to where you are. Even if you just finish paying, you get the next year free. So wherever you last paid from the end of that, you get another year free. 
Okay. And don't and don't run away, people. I am putting in uh, the complete list of all of those services. I just put it in the chat box with links. And if you want to oh uh, save them, uh, just there's three dots at the bottom of the chat box. And if you'll look, uh, one of the choices is, uh, uh, I believe, save. Uh, you can save the chat or you can highlight them and copy them and paste them into something else. Bar anything else, if you can't find them, Huey at Huey.net, uh, send me an email and I'll send you the list. If you and Judy Talur, I see you're on. Uh, yeah. This is a, another uh, uh, presentation I'd like to add to the Speakers Bureau. I'd like you to give it in December 14th <clears throat> at our Wednesday workshop. Uh, I'll have to check my schedule. Would uh, you please? I can't. I I can't promise you because December is a very busy month for me. Yeah. But let me let me. See. If not, I'll do it in January. For sure. Uh, if you save your chat, you will find it as a text.txt file instantly. So all you need to do is in search box put txt and boom, it's right in front of your very eyes. And then you can do something with it. I copy and paste it and put it into Word since that's the program I use most. How do I save it and put in Word? How do we save the chat box? Uh, dot menu, one of the options is to save. And when you select save, it will save it to your document folder under Zoom with today's date. If you look at the chat box, it says to everyone. And you track yes. your mouse all the way over to the other side, your pointer, and you see three dots. Yes. Click on those three dots and save your chat. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Welcome. And that's that's in any of the Zoom meetings. So anytime uh, uh, you want to save questions and answers and so on and, and links that are in that chat box, just go ahead and do it. Now, because it saves it as a text file, those links aren't live. But if you then put it into Word or put it into uh, another document, it'll become a live link. Or you might have to uh, click it or just copy and paste it, and you can get to the website. And once okay. we leave here, you won't find it anymore. So so at least save it if you want, want the information. Yeah, You'll be able to get it from Huey because he'll have it. Oh, well, that's true. And also we'll yeah. be able to because he's recorded. Right. Which we thank you for, Huey. Thanks again for the great Good. presentation. And all of you have a very, very wonderful rest of your December, month of December. Enjoy whatever <clears throat> you're going to enjoy this month. And we will see yes. you next month. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining. Hope you learned something. Oh, yes. <laughs> I learned how to get the camera.